All right. Today we're going to properly use the Amco brake lathe. This machine is set up to do, we can do rotors or we can do drums. I'm going to show you the proper procedures to mount it and perform a scratch test. In another video, I'll show you how to run the machine, perform a fast cut and a slow cut, otherwise known as a rough cut and a finish cut. First step is to make sure you're inside of your drum, this surface that mounts to the hub of the vehicle is clean and the outer surface is clean. Any imperfections can cause that drum to mount crooked. We are going to find the largest cup to fit in the inside of the drum. Remember, you will have to get a cutter inside of here, so be cautious of the gap. This one fits perfectly. It's not up on this edge. Um, and it, this edge of the cup is not hitting anything in the drums. Same thing on the other side, fit on nicely. You're going to want to put on matching cups. These cups have a notch in them. I like to keep those straight up and I'll explain that a little bit later. Put the first cup on and put the spring on. This is a taper or I call it the cone. The cone needs to fit in the drum and you should have part of the cone sticking out. Put the cone on. The surfaces of the cups are clean. The arbor is clean. I'm going to put the drum on. Don't try not to just drop it on the arbor or slide it on. Put our other cup on. We're going to put on the spacer. Then we have our nut. Now this nut, you can see, is threaded out to the end here. But if I spin it around, it does, it is not threaded. It's only threaded about a third of the way through. So for this case, to thread this nut on, we would bottom out right here on the arbor. But if I put the smooth side, the non-threaded side on first, it'll slide over top of that arbor. And we're going to hit onto our spacer. Again, I make sure those notches are up. While I'm tightening, I grab up on the drum and lift up and down to help center that on the cone better. My wrench. It's lefty tighty, righty loosey, so I'm gonna tighten it by going left. Just a couple hits of it. I prefer, recommend, we run the drum all the way in. Make sure you're loose on the lock. Run all the way in. When it stops, it stops. There's no use trying to force it. Then I back it off about a turn. Next step is we're gonna install our, I call it a boring bar. Two pieces here and go together. I'm just gonna tighten the boring bar in here. Put the first piece on. We have our boring bar. This is our cutter right at the end. Set that in. Okay. It's our boring bar mount. 
We have our nut we're gonna put on. I just I just get this snug so I can still move things around. We're gonna run our cross feed in. Make sure the lock nut's loose. Run our cross feed in. I ran it in all the way. Then I'm gonna come out about a turn. What I like to do is run the cutter into the drum and I run it all the way to the back corner. We should now be able to see in there that our boring bar and our cutter is in the back end of that drum. We're all the way in. Now that I'm in where I need to be, oh, snug her down. Now that I'm in there, I left that uh, one rotation, so now I can move the boring bar off the surface of the drum. And I'm going to take my drum, I'm going to run it out so I'm about maybe an inch in from the edge of the drum. We're now going to perform a scratch test. To keep the drum from chattering, I'm going to put on this rubber, this band. It's a, called a silencer band. And you're going to want this silencer band out on the edge. And he's got to kind of work it on here. Give it a little stretch to hold her tight. Come around. And this clip you just slide it in you got to stretch the band a little bit and I just like to make sure it's on on the outer edge it's okay if it hangs over a little bit no big deal our goal is to keep that drum from resonating I'm gonna fire it up and I'm gonna run the cutter in and I'm looking I'm gonna go really slow and I want that cutter to just hit into the drum and make just a little a little scratch in it. The shorter the, sh the scratch, the better. If the scratch goes all the way around, you won't be able to do the next step properly. The biggest thing with a brake lathe is you're gonna listen for noises. And we're looking for a, kind of a ticking noise, like a slight scrape, but a ticking noise. So I'll start the machine. And I'm going to slowly turn this cross feed knob and I'm bringing the cutter into the drum. If it seems like you're taking a long time, then you're doing it properly. So we can hear that ticking. Okay. Now I'm gonna now I'm gonna shut the machine off. I'm gonna make sure that I have my notches up. Notch here and a notch here. I'm going to grab onto the drum and I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees. So I rotated it 180 degrees. I'm going to make sure my cup, the notch is straight up. And now as I tighten the drum, I'm lifting up, wiggling. Remember, lefty tighty, righty loosey. Snug it up, and I'm just going to turn, I'm going to bring the drum in just a half a turn or so. I'm going to start the machine, I'm going to put one, another scratch in it. Okay, 
I have my two scratches. Shut the machine off. Now we can see two little lines side by side. They're flashing together. That means we have properly mounted the drum to the lathe. The reason we do the scratch test is to verify our setup was correct. 